All right. So uh, in the last couple classes, uh, we've been talking about simple interest. Well, this time out, we're going to deal with a different type of interest. And it's, to be honest, it is the interest that's used mostly in the world today. Uh, and it's called compound interest. Now, compound interest is different from si simple interest in that interest is charged on interest. So things, if you do not pay your bills, uh, the interest can rise very quickly because you're basically being taxed on a tax. So your bill can go up dramatically. Where simple interest just charges you interest at the end, uh, compound interest will keep charging you over and over again. Now the formula for simple interest, or sorry, compound interest, is we have A is equal to P times that's a one here, one plus I to the power of N. Now, a couple of these are uh, familiar, but others are not. And so this is where our A value um, is the final amount that you either owe or that you're earning. Because again, we got two different perspectives you can look at um, either as a borrower or as a lender. Uh, P is uh, is the principal, so that doesn't change. Just as I uh, is the interest rate, so that doesn't change. Those are the same. Um, but N uh, is the number of years for us. All right, so there's our formula. So we're not going to find the amount of interest uh, like we did before. We're going to find the final amount. So it's a little bit different in the in the way the formula works that, or how it works. Uh, but we're going to try, and we got an exponent as well here. So we're going to try a few examples. All right. So again, I'm going to write down my formula here that we're going to use because we're using the words compounded. All right. So that's something you're going to have to watch out for on tests and quizzes, or on, I guess our CATs. Uh, so we have our A is equal to P uh, times 1 plus I to the power of N. All right. So in this question, it says, if $350 is invested for three years at a rate of 7% compounded yearly, how much is in the account after three years? All right. So it says if $350 is invested. And again, P is the amount that you're either borrowing or investing, and depending on your perspective here. So P is $350. Uh, it's being invested for three years. So this time when we talk about time, it's an N value, which is three years. Now our I is, again, our interest rate. And nothing's going to change with that in terms of that it needs to be converted to a decimal. So once again, I'm going to uh, divide by 100% and I get 0 0.07. And what we're looking for is how much is in the account. All right. So I'm going to uh, substitute in my values here. So I have A is equal to 350 uh, times 1 plus my interest rate, which again is... 0 0.07 uh, to the power of 3. All right. So, uh, again, I can sh simplify this a little bit. It's just exactly like Bedmas we're going to do. So, inside the brackets first. All right. So, I've got two numbers that I'm going to add inside the brackets. So, 1 plus 0 0.07. Well, that's going to be 1.07. And to the power of three. All right, again, following Bedmas to figure out what we got here, uh, I'm going to do my exponent next. So I take my 1.07 uh, to the power of three. And uh, to do two decimal places, I get uh, 1.23. All right, and then finally, multipl multiplication. Final amount that's in going to be in this account, uh, I take 350, I times it by 1.23, and I get $430.50 will be in the account. You put $350 in for three years at a rate of 7%, 
we get $430.50. All right, so it works a little bit differently in the information that you get for a final answer. All right, uh, next up here, let's see here. So uh, if $425 is borrowed this time for two years at a rate of 21% compounded yearly, uh, so I'm using my compounded formula. How much is owed after two years? All right, so again, it's compounded, so I'm going to use my compound interest formula. Again, those are the words. That's how you know which formula to use when we're doing our CATs. All right, so there's my formula. Now, again, uh, looking at our values, if $425 is borrowed, so again, that is our principal, uh, two years, and that's our N value now, where it was our T value before in our simple interest formula. Ah, uh, ooh, our interest rate, 21%. All right, so uh, I got to flip that to a decimal. So I'm going to divide there by my 100%, get 0 0.21. And again, uh, we want to know the amount owed after those two years. All right, so uh, once again, I'm going to substitute into my formula here. So I have A is equal to my p-value, 425. Again, in the brackets, uh, well, I didn't have to put that in brackets, but it won't hurt. Uh, I got my 1 plus my interest rate there of 0 0.21. And since this is two years, my exponent will be uh, 2. All right, so uh, let's see here. Uh, again, simplifying things using Bedmas. Got to do the brackets first. So I got my 425 here. Uh, in the brackets, I got 1 plus 0 0.21. So I'm going to have uh, 1.21. And again, that exponent uh, to the power of 2. All right, uh, now it's time uh, again. Bedmas, B, E, E. We got to do the exponent next here. So my amount that I owe is going to be 425. Uh, let's see here. I take 1.21 uh, to the power of 2, and I get uh, 1.46. All right, and then our last step here uh, is to multiply those two numbers here. So let's see here. I get 425 uh, times 1.46, and I would end up owing. I borrowed $425, and I would end up owing six hundred and twenty two dollars and twenty four cents there we go all right uh let's try one more slightly different ending on this one now example number three how much interest is paid if fourteen thousand dollars is borrowed for a car at a rate of six percent compounded yearly and the loan term is five years, which typically a car loan is five years. All right, so again, it's compounded. So I got A is equal to P times one plus I to the power of N. Now we're looking for how much interest is paid. Well, you can see that a big I is not in, the, in this formula. But here's what we can do. We can find out how much we're going to pay in this loan, first off, because we're borrowing $14,000. So that's our P value, $14,000 car we got going on here. Uh, it is at an interest rate of 6%, which, of course, turned to a decimal. I'm going to end up with, uh, let's see here, divide by 100%, 0 0.06. Uh, a loan, time of... Uh, five years now what we're going to do first here is find the amount that we're actually going to pay for the car it's a fourteen thousand dollar car but because we're borrowing money it's going to cost us more than that because we got to pay interest all right so i'm going to substitute in my information here all right so i have a is equal to my p value uh, again is fourteen thousand dollars whoops get rid of that f fourteen thousand dollars uh, I have a one in the brackets there, uh, plus my interest rate, which is 0 0.06. All right. And again, to the power of, what's my exponent here? Uh, five. Go. 
All right. Now, uh, again, bad miss. So uh, I got to do my brackets first. So I got my 14,000 uh, one times 1.06 1 uh, to the power of five. All right. So again, uh, exponents is next there. So my amount here is 14,000. Uh, 1.06 to the power of 5, because i got to do my exponent here. And I get uh, 1.33. All right. Lastly, figuring out, not well, I guess not lastly, but lastly for this part, how much we're actually going to pay for the car is 14,000 times 1.33. And it's uh, 18, let's throw a dollar sign in there, $18,000, uh, 735 point one five. Now, this question is asking, how much interest are you paying? Well, if it's a $14,000 car, that's to pay for the car. The rest of the money will be interest because in total, I'm paying $18,735. And so if I want to find the amount of interest, I'm going to take how much I actually paid for the car, subtract the actual price of the car, which in this case would be our principal. So we are going to pay $18,735, and don't forget the 15 cents for this car. The actual price of it was $14,000, and so that left over here is our interest. And so if I subtract my two numbers, the amount of interest paid on the car, uh, let's see here, I subtract my $18,735.15 minus $14,000, I get $4,000. $735.15 is how much interest will be. So $14,000 car, and you're almost paying $5,000 in interest simply because you can't afford the car, you can't afford to pay cash for the car. And so because you have to borrow the money over uh, five years, you're going to pay five, almost $5,000. It's an extra thousand, almost an extra thousand dollars a month Again, because you can't afford the car. So that is, uh, the, the, I guess, the terrible thing of interest is when you're borrowing the money, uh, is that actually you, because you don't have money, you're going to pay more for something in the end. It's kind of sneaky, though, because you don't realize it uh, because uh, the bank just adds the money. 